And the whole thing sort of collapsed in a damp, confusing mess. So admittedly, the WWE did a pretty spot on impression of WCW there. Well done. <laughs> Hello there, I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and welcome to How WWE Should Have Booked, where I look back at infamous WWE missed opportunities and say how I would book them differently because I'm a smart ass. So this week we're looking at the NWO's run in the WWE in 2002, after Ric Flair was revealed as Vince McMahon's business partner and Vinnie Mac decided to cut a promo saying that he would kill the WWE by injecting it with a lethal dose. Of poison. That's a more subtle promo than Vince gave. And by a lethal dose of poison, he means old dudes. These old dudes, to be precise. Yes, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and Hollywood Hogan. They debut at No Way Out in 2002 and immediately cut a promo going, Hey, we're not the bad guys. We just want to be heard. And we just want to thank Vince McMahon for this opportunity. And everyone just went, oh, bollocks. Because yes, it was a much tamer version of the NWO. What happened next? Hogan went on to face The Rock in an Icon vs Icon match at WrestleMania, which was admittedly a classic, and Stone Cold Steve Austin faced Scott Hall in a match that was not. So then Hollywood Hogan turned face and had a regrettable run with the WWE Championship, and Scott Hall and Kevin Nash had to recruit other members. They recruited Big Show and X-Park, because everything goes better with X-Park. And then Kevin Nash got injured. Scott Hall had to quit because of a messy divorce he was going through. Kevin Nash came back. Kevin Nash got injured. Shawn Michaels came on board. Booker T joined and Booker T was kicked out. And the whole thing sort of collapsed in a damp, confusing mess. So admittedly, the WWE did a pretty spot on impression of WCW there. Well done, but I can do it better. Okay, so we start before the Royal Rumble in 2002. Ric Flair is the business partner, is using his money, money, magic, woo! Powers to say, hey, I like this company, but it needs more limousines, woo! Then Vince McMahon says, hey, I built this company, and damn it, if Ric Flair thinks he's gonna kill it, I'm going to kill Ric Flair. And he sets it up. His New Year's resolution is to kill Ric Flair's WWE. So they have a street fight at the Royal Rumble, which Ric Flair wins, which happened in real life. Then after the match, Vince McMahon gets on the mic, he's broken and he's bloody and he calls out to Ric Flair, you think this is over? Yeah, think this is, I can't do an impression of Vince McMahon. You think this is over? Well, the worst is yet to come. I'm going to inject the WWE with a lethal dose of poison. Drop the mic. Then the rest of the pay-per-view happens as normal. And then we get through the Royal Rumble. Everything's going fine. Then we get to the number 30 spot and we hear this. And out come the NWO. All three of them and the crowd flip their biscuits because they're not expecting it. There's been no announcement or anything. These three guys return and all three of them are at the number 30 spot because why not? Screw you, go to hell. They get in the Royal Rumble armed with steel pipes and they bludgeon everybody, throwing everybody out before they climb over the top ropes and jump down to the floor at exactly the same time. The NWO win the Royal Rumble. They've ruined something. Already the poison has started to take hold because everyone loves the Royal Rumble. On Raw the next night, they cripple Stone Cold Steve Austin. They tear off his leg, break kayfabe, injure his leg, and leave him broken and battered. They also put Ric Flair in the hospital, all while Vince McMahon goes, ha, 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 ha. This is all great. Then at No Way Out, the next pay-per-view, the NWO say they're going to reshape the WWF as they see it. And they challenge Y2J for a match for his WWE Undisputed Championship. Uh, because all three of them run the uh, Royal Rumble. They say, hey, it's gonna be a three-on-one, but hey, that won't fly with the heroes, and out comes The Rock and Triple H to help Y2J. So there's a big six-man tag at the beginning of the next pay-per-view. Unfortunately, because Rock and Triple H and Y2J all want to be the champion, they can't work as a team, whereas the NWO does. They lay out Y2J, they gesture to Hulk Hogan, he makes the cover, they are the champion, and they spray paint the belts with the NWO sign. After celebrating on Raw, Steve Austin makes his return and goes after the NWO and the match is set. Hogan versus Austin, WrestleMania X8 for the WWE Championship, which is the match that they really should have done. Meanwhile, lower on the card, Hall and Nash face The Undertaker and Kane for the Tag Team Championships. They win those due to shenanigans. Then in the main event, 
Hogan faces Austin. Now, what's so good about the original NWO is that they took one of the superstars who was most beloved by the fans, or at least was at some point, and turned him heel, giving him a new lease on life. Who do we have? Hmm, I know. The Rock. The Rock comes out, he costs Stone Cold Steve Austin his title shot, he rips open his shirt to reveal NWO. There's four of them now, and they've each got a belt. Hall and Nash have tag team belts, Hogan has the big gold belt from WCW spray painted, and The Rock's got the WWE title spray painted. So now they're four men strong, The Rock is cutting promo after promo after promo, and these are awesome heel promos. And we're talking circa 2003 awesome Rock heel promos here. They're fantastic. At Backlash, Undertaker steps up, nope. At Judgment Day, Y2J gives it a shot, but he can't do it. So you need to make new stars in this feud, so you build up a brand new babyface in Booker T. You play off the fact that he was never in NWO when it was in WCW. He cuts a vicious promo saying, I watched you kill WCW and it's not gonna happen to the WWE, Shucky Ducky, Spinneroonie, etc. Then of course, he gets beat. Vince McMahon realizes he can't control the NWO and they are starting to kill his company. And he thinks, well, I don't want this. So he begs the NWO to stop. They beat him up and torture him. And they force him to sign a match, Hogan versus Vince McMahon at King of the Ring for control of Vince McMahon's share of the company. It's a huge match, Vince versus Hogan, and of course, despite the fact that Vince, you know, brings out every big gun he's got, the NWO debut a new member, the Big Show, and they win controlling share in the company. Yes, the NWO are in charge, and they start to grow bigger and bigger and more unwieldy and more chaotic. Now, I know the NWO getting too big was what killed it in WCW, but we've got a set time limit on this, so it's gonna be fine. So the NWO grows, and they recruit new members like, yes, fine, x Park, and this new guy that everyone keeps talking about, what's his name, Brock Lesnar, I think? Things start to deteriorate, they start to take over whole programs, they beat up announcers, they tear down the set. Just like in WCW days, they get their own pay-per-view. And again, it's Austin versus Hogan for the WWE Championship. And every single match on the card is baby faces getting beaten up by their NWO counterparts. And so finally we get to the main event and Hogan's beating Austin because it's a no holds barred match and he's taunting the crowd. He hasn't pinned him yet, but he's taunting the crowd saying, look at your hero, blah, blah, blah. Then we hear, Woo! Ric Flair is back. And he says, hey guys, do you remember my share in the company? And he's like, I am sick of the NWO. I am killing you right here, right now. And Hogan's like, uh, have you seen Austin? Who do you guys have? And Ric Flair says, I remember Hogan. I remember back in WCW. I remember who stood up to you. I remember who made you scared, Hogan. And out comes Sting. Yes, Sting didn't want to join WWE after his WCW contract expired, but they bring him back for this because everyone likes this storyline because it's great. Yes, Sting returns and he points the baseball bat at Hollywood Hulk Hogan. He comes down to the ring, clears the ring with his bat, drops a scorpion death drop on Hogan, and Austin covers him to get back the championship for the WWE. Then at SummerSlam, the main event is set. An eight-man tag, Ric Flair's team versus the NWO's team for controlling share over the WWE. The entire thing, the entire operating share. Ric Flair's team consists of Stone Cold Steve Austin, Y2J, Booker T, and Sting. On the NWO, Hall, Nash, Hulk Hogan, and The Rock. And then finally, the WWE wins. Stone Cold Steve Austin hits the stunner, Hollywood Hulk Hogan staggers back into a scorpion death drop, bang, Sting pins him, one, two, three, everyone is saved. Then, if you still want to do the Hollywood Hulk Hogan face turn, you just have him offer a handshake to Stone Cold Steve Austin. They shake hands and, you know, that's fine. Hollywood Hulk Hogan can do his run, whatever. This way, you can tempt Sting into the WWE with the promise of a hot angle. You can keep Austin around by playing into his ego with Austin versus Hogan. You can let The Rock go off to shoot as many movies as he likes. And you can also elevate ex-WCW stars in the WWE audience's eyes. Nobody loses. So that's how WWE should have booked the NWO. Do you disagree? Tell us about it in the comments and also tell us what angles you would like me to book next. The next video will be an audience request video. So tell us about it in the comments. I've been Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.